If you're looking to build a home theater, in this video, I wanna share with you some things that I've learned over the past 14 years when I built my home theater, and hopefully these things will help you in the process of building yours. Now, before we jump into the video, if this is the first time that we're meeting, my name is Michael Stevens with Youthman Reviews. I make videos on home theater tips, tours, as well as product reviews. And so if you're into that, make sure you're subscribed. So about 14 years ago, I made the decision to build a dedicated theater room in a 13 foot by 19 foot with 10 foot ceilings. And through that process, honestly, I've learned quite a bit. A lot of it, I just had to learn the hard way. And so I thought, let me make a list of things that I kind of wish that I would have known or even things that I've learned over the past 14 years of building out my home theater that would be able to be hopefully a benefit and value to you. So the first thing is begin with the end in mind. And what I mean by that is kind of think long term. Where do you want to go with your home theater? You know, one thing that is kind of typical when we build out a home theater is a lot of times we're limited to a, a certain budget. And so we just kind of get the cheapest thing that we can just to get by. And then down the road, we figure, OK, well, I'll eventually upgrade. What I found in my life and in this theater room, the times that I did that, I typically when I made sacrifices or I kind of cut corners and didn't really get what I wanted to get, I ended up eventually selling it, losing money on it, you know, whether it was an AVR, whether it was the speakers that I wanted, and I ended up losing money on it and ended up spending the money on what I initially wanted. And so kind of think through, think long term, don't necessarily think what you're wanting right now, but think long term, okay, maybe you can't afford a 7.1.4 system and you're going to have to start out with a five channel system. That's okay, but think long term. Where do you want to end up and make your plans accordingly? Number two, make a budget, but be prepared to stretch it. Um, I found out with my home theater, it ended up costing more than what I thought it was going to, but I was able to do some things very creatively like barter for website design services to keep the cost really, really low um, and just some other things I'll even share with you later on in this video. But think about your budget and as you plan for it, everybody has to work within a budget, whether it's a small, medium or even a large budget, but just be prepared that there's probably going to come some unexpected expenses or you may um, get to a point to where you may decide to kind of upgrade to the next thing, whether it's maybe an AVR, getting the next model up. Um, you may decide to go with a bigger screen. There's a lot of things that take place in the build process. And so uh, kind of like building a home, have your budget in mind, figure out what you can afford and try to stay within that. But just realize that budget probably is gonna need to stretch just a little bit. Now, before we get to number three, Here's a word from our show sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an incredible online learning community with tens of thousands of classes for creators, business professionals, and people that are looking to learn new skills. Skillshare offers an enormous amount of classes for content creators like myself, but also provide classes on business, management, marketing, and even courses on lifestyle and productivity. With literally tens of thousands of courses to choose from, you'll never run out of new things to learn. Now I'm currently going through a really cool course called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD. In the video, Marquez shares the process of how he researches, scripts, creates visuals, and shares some great tips on how to grow your YouTube channel. This class is one hour and 15 minutes, but I'm able to go at my own pace and work in a session here and there when my schedule allows. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Number three, research, 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 but then be prepared to make a decision. Now, honestly guys, in true full transparency, I'm very indecisive when it comes to a lot of things. And the biggest reason is I just overthink stuff. I'll process it and research it and research it and process it. And then I'll think I made a decision 
And then it's like, but what about this? And so my encouragement, do as much research as you can. The last thing you wanna do is just start buying components and then get it all together and realize, well, shoot, I don't even have the right connections for this. I don't have the right cables for this. Or I don't have the right speaker length, uh, speaker wire length or interconnect links and things like that. And so you wanna make sure you do your research so that you know what you're getting into but there comes a time where you just have to make a decision and go for it and trust that the decision you made is the best you could do with the information that had been provided to you. And fortunately, of course, with YouTube, there's a ton of great content creators out there. Um, you know, of course, my channel has probably over 400 videos on the channel that can hopefully help you and provide some valuable information. Um, insight as to how to build a home theater and some tips to calibrate that and so forth. But there's some other really, really great content creators out there as well. And so definitely use that as a great resource. So do the research, but then be prepared to make a decision. Number four, one thing that I'd really encourage you to consider when building out a home theater especially if you're in the build phase. If you've already got a pre-existing room, it makes it a little bit more difficult like I do, but especially if you're building out, say, a basement and you've got a blank canvas to work with, I really highly encourage you to add conduit. And basically the biggest area that I see um, looking back, the, the cables that I've needed to replace mainly was an HDMI cable. In 14 years, I've had to replace the cable twice, and it's not because it broke, it's because technology has changed. And so currently, I have a fiber optic cable, prime example. If you look right back here, I don't know if I can point to it, but somewhere back here, there is a small cable. So I ran a fiber optic cable in here just to test it, and that's been a long time ago. But because I live in Florida, I've got to climb in a really, really hot attic and I'm waiting till winter time to come and it's actually almost winter time now. Um, it's still pretty warm here in Florida, so I've still got another month or two, but I'm gonna be jumping in the attic once it's cooler and then I'm gonna be pulling cable through there. But had I had run some conduit up in my attic, um, probably about two inches would have been really, really nice. And conduit basically just used some PVC pipe and definitely use some rounded corners. Um, that would allow you to tie basically a string through that conduit. And as you pull that string, you can pull your new HDMI cable. Um, so that would just be really, really helpful and handy. Then I could just get me on one end, a friend on the other end, and we could pull that cable without even having to go into my attic. And so if you have the option, I highly recommend adding some conduit. Number five, plan on acoustic treatment at the beginning, not the end. Now, this is certainly something that I kind of went completely backwards. I began building out my home theater. I had my speakers and then I got my theater seats and I built my riser and I added my Atmos speakers and I went with a bigger screen and, and all these things, upgrading equipment and AVRs and adding amplifiers oh, wait a minute, I've never actually added uh, acoustic panels to my room. So then I added, uh, I think I had five on the sidewalls, three on one wall, two on another. And it wasn't literally until probably about three months ago that I began thinking, man, you know, I really haven't done a whole lot acoustic wise. And so I reached out to GIK and they were awesome and they wanted to do a partnership uh, on some sponsored videos. And so they were gracious enough to provide me with the acoustic treatment that you see back here on the walls. And I've got several videos on the channel in regards to that. But man, I wish I would have done that and thought about that initially. Because adding acoustic treatment, even the five that I had initially, made a big difference. You can have the best speakers, the best amplifier, the best processor in the world, but if your acoustics in your room is horrible, there's not a whole lot that room correction software can do. And so think about that from the beginning. What kind of acoustic treatments are you going to do? Are you going to build them on your own, which could save you a ton of money and you can make some really cool looking ones. Do you want to uh, buy some like GIK? There's other brands out there, ATS, 
a lot of companies that make them. They're definitely a lot more expensive, but you can get some really cool designs that maybe, unless you just got the skills and equipment, um, you might not be able to make those on your own. And so thinking through that at the beginning and make plans and preparations, and most importantly, put aside some money, put aside in your budget to add acoustic treatment, whether it's on your side walls, rear walls. Um, just recently, I added some to my ceiling and even behind my cabinet. And so there's a lot of areas that your room may need treatment. And so think about that at the beginning and not the end. Number six, run at least one dedicated 20 amp circuit. A lot of homes in the US, we have 15 amp circuits. I know in this room, this wasn't a theater room. This was called a media room. And so it was basically just a room without a closet. And so the electricians, when they first built this house, they just had a 15 amp circuit in here. And I found out quickly when I had multiple subwoofers playing, when the bass was pumping, my lights would dim with the music. And that's not a good thing. Um, you're depriving your amplifiers of the power that they need from the wall. And so don't do that. So make sure you at least do a 20 amp circuit. I ended up later on running a dedicated 20 amp to my room. So my lights and the wall plugs are running off of uh, the 15 amp circuit that comes to the room. And then I have a dedicated 20 amp that runs all of my equipment and subwoofers. And so once I did that, I've never tripped a breaker. I've never seen my lights dim, of course, because they're on a separate dimmer. Um, but some guys like to even go beyond that. And so they'll run multiple 20 amp circuits. So again, think about that stuff initially before you even get into this because especially if you're building a home, it's much cheaper and much easier and a whole lot less expensive to do that you know, in the design and build phase than it is to do that retro down the road. Number seven, if you are handy, DIY or do it yourself can save you a ton of money. Now, I'm not super handy myself, but I was smart enough to get some guys that are. And so there are several things in my theater room that are DIY that saved me a ton of money. Initially, acoustic panels were DIY. I paid like 11 bucks a piece for them. They didn't look that great and I don't know how well they, they work, but they definitely helped out with some of the high frequencies and cleaned up the mid range. Um, you know, when I was watching a movie, uh, dialogue was more intelligible. And so in that respect, they did its job but they just didn't look fancy or anything. Um, but DIY, another area that we did was my riser. So we built a custom riser in the back. We put insulation in it um, so that it wouldn't vibrate. We glued it down, we nailed it down, but it didn't cost me a lot of money. And then the other area that we did DIY uh, was we took care of building this cabinet up front. Um, I had a friend of mine that is very good and very handy in woodworking and did a beautiful job with that. A lot of carpenters have looked at the, the construction of that and they've looked at all the details, the hand carved um, accent pieces, the hand carved dovetails in it, the bull nose um, that were created, the custom crown molding. All of that was custom and most guys have told me that if I were to hire somebody to do that, I would have spent probably $20,000, maybe even $30,000 on this custom cabinet, and I had $3,000 invested in it. So DIY can save you a ton of money if you're handy, and if you're not, find some friends who are. Number eight, don't be afraid to look for some quality used gear, or maybe even speakers. I know for probably the first 12 years of building out my home theater, most of my equipment was either purchased, used, or even the speakers. I rocked the Clips La Scala's for seven years and I, they were very, very affordable. Now, brand new, they're very expensive, but I, mine were built back in 1980. So they were really, really old, but they sounded really, really good. And so don't be afraid to look on the used market, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, OfferUp, eBay, um, all those places, Audio Gone. There's a lot of different resources out there. In fact, I even did a, a course on how to score youth man deals. Um, in the Clips community, I became known for 
youth man deals and finding these crazy, crazy cheap deals in the used market. And so I just built a short course that just kind of walks you step by step on how I was able to, to score those. And I share a lot of the numbers on what I actually paid and how I was able to, to get those. And so if that's something you're interested in, I'll leave a link to that course down in the description below. But don't be hesitant to buy used gear. Number nine, I would highly encourage you to start a build thread in the AVS forum. Now over in the AVS forum, there's a section, I think it's under construction and, and build. And in that, if you create one and basically you just start off saying, hey, I'm starting to build a home theater. And that is a great way for you to ask questions, for you to post um, your build along the way. When I was building my riser, I would post, Here's where we were, you know, what we've done. Here's how we did it. And so I would be able to provide inspiration for other people that were doing the same and looking for resources on how to do the same thing that I was doing. But there were a lot of times where I got to the point where I just didn't have the answer and I needed to ask questions. And that build thread was a huge resource. And of course, there's some great Facebook groups out there as well. I even created a Youth Man Crew Facebook group just for that very reason, to offer some help and some resources for you to be around a community of guys that are just as passionate about home theater as we are. And so if you're interested in that, I've also got a link to that down in the description as well. Now the 10th and final thing that I wanna encourage you to do is enjoy the journey. I know it's real easy to get caught up in all the details of building out a home theater, and there are gonna be some things as you're building it, it's gonna frustrate you and it's not going to work as well, and you're gonna run in some hiccups, and especially if you're doing a lot of the work yourself. And so just enjoy each step of that process. I remember when I first started building out my home theater uh, 14 years ago, I didn't have a whole lot of fancy equipment. I had a lot of used gear. I had um, just some nice speakers, but they weren't super high end. And so, but I enjoyed that part of my journey. Um, there was a point where I had um, used theater seating that were very, very inexpensive. I enjoyed using them. Um, down the road, I decided to upgrade to Atmos and I enjoyed it all the way up until Atmos. And then now that I've got Dolby Atmos set up in my room, I enjoy it even more. When I had a 103 inch screen, I enjoyed the 103 inch screen. Now that I've got a 150 inch screen, I enjoy the 150 inch screen. You see, for me, it's not about trying to get to an end game or an end result. It's really about the journey, about the process of getting um, you know, from A to B. But again, I'm not even trying to get to B. I'm more interested in, the, in what happens between A and B than I am the end result. And I even made a video on that very thing talking about my journey, how I've spent the past 14 years building out my home theater and I've just enjoyed every part of that process. And so if this video has been helpful to you and you wanna hear more about that journey, you can take a look at that video right here. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I produce weekly content every single week on home theater tips, tours, and product reviews. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.